The pressurization system on the F320 normally operates automatically to adjust the cabin altitude and its rate of change to ensure maximum passenger comfort and safety. The pressurized areas are the cockpit, the avionics bay, the cabin, and the cargo compartments. The concept of the system is simple. Air is supplied from the air conditioning packs to the pressurized areas. An outflow valve is used to regulate the amount of air allowed to escape from the pressurized areas. Automatic control of the outflow valve is provided by two cabin pressure controllers, CPC. Each controller has an electric motor to move the outflow valve. Note, the CPC receives data from the Air Data Inertial and Reference System, ADIRS, the Flight Management and Guidance Computer, FMGC, the Full Authority Digital Engine Control, FADEC, and the Landing Gear Control and Interface Unit, LGCIU, in order to elaborate the different pressurization control laws. A controller motor combination is known as a system. Only one system will operate at any one time, with the other system acting as backup. A third motor is installed for use in the event of both automatic systems failing and requires a manual input to open or close the outflow valve. Two independent pneumatic safety valves are installed at the rear pressure bulkhead above the flotation line and they operate to avoid a cabin differential pressure from going too high or too low. Let us look at the operation of the outflow valve for an aircraft in cruise and what happens to cabin differential pressure, cabin altitude and cabin vertical speed. We will start with cabin differential pressure. If the outflow valve is closed or only allowing a small amount of air to escape, then the cabin differential pressure will increase. Now let's look at what happens to cabin altitude. If the outflow valve is closed or only allowing a small amount of air to escape, then the cabin altitude will descend. We can also see what the cabin is doing by reference to vertical speed. When the outflow valve closes, the cabin altitude will decrease, negative vertical speed. If the outflow valve is fully open, a lot of air is allowed to escape. The cabin pressure will decrease, the cabin altitude will climb, positive vertical speed. The crew can monitor all cabin pressure functions on the ECAM cabin pressure page. Let's look at the information related to the pressurization system that is presented on the cab press page. The pack indication is displayed green when the related pack is on. The outflow valve position can be monitored and the system controller in use is shown. There is a single indication for the safety valves. We will look at how this indication changes later in the module. The cabin differential pressure, or delta P, shows the difference in PSI between the cabin pressure and external pressure. This differential pressure will be at zero on the ground and increase as the aircraft climbs. The cabin vertical speed shows the rate of change in feet per minute of cabin altitude. For passenger comfort, the pressurization system will aim to keep this rate of change as small as possible. The cabin altitude is also shown. The vent, the inlet, and the outlet indications are related to the avionics ventilation system and will be discussed later. On the ECAM cruise page, there are indications of cabin differential pressure, cabin vertical speed, cabin altitude. There is also an indication of cabin vertical speed on the ECAM door page. 
Note that this indication is only displayed when the aircraft is airborne. On the overhead panel, there is a cabin pressure panel containing controls to operate the pressurization system. Under normal conditions, no pilot action is required on this panel during flight. The pressurization mode selector push button switch has two settings, automatic and manual. The normal position for this push button switch is lights out. In this position, the pressurization system is in automatic mode. The landing elevation selector normally remains in the auto position. Landing elevation, which is required by the pressurization system, is then provided by the FMTS based upon elevation of the destination airport. If the landing elevation is not available from the FMGS, then it can be set manually using this selector. The guarded ditching push button switch is provided to close all valves below the waterline so that the aircraft can be sealed in the unlikely event of a ditching. For a better understanding of how the pressurization system works, we will go through a normal flight profile paying particular attention to the ECAM indications. When the aircraft is on the ground before the flight, the outflow valve is fully open. There is no differential pressure and there is no vertical speed. We can also notice that the cabin altitude is indicating the field elevation of the departure airfield. During the takeoff roll, the system controller signals the outflow valve to close slightly in order to pre-pressurize the aircraft. This is to avoid a pressure surge at rotation. At liftoff, the controller initiates the climb phase and cabin altitude varies according to a fixed law, taking into account the actual rate of climb of the aircraft. The outflow valve will move as required to achieve this. Once established in cruise, the cabin altitude and differential pressure will remain steady. The outflow valve will move as required to maintain the cabin altitude. In the example shown, the aircraft is in cruise at 35,000 feet. Notice the values of differential pressure and cabin altitude. During the descent phase, the pressure rate is optimized so that the cabin reaches landing field pressure just prior to landing. Note, for passenger comfort, the automatic function will limit the rate of cabin descent to a maximum of approximately 750 feet per minute. At touchdown, the cabin altitude should be at the airfield elevation and there should be no residual pressure. To ensure this, few seconds after touchdown, the outflow valve fully opens by the active controller. few seconds after the outflow valve is fully open, an automatic changeover of the system controllers occurs in preparation for the next flight. This happens so that both systems are used equally. Let's now review some failure cases. The caution cabin pressure landing elevation fault is telling you that the pressurization system has, for some reasons, lost the landing elevation data normally supplied by the FMGS. Notice that, depending on the version, the landing elevation details on the system page are blanked, or are replaced by amber crosses, or by zero. Read the actions on the engine warning display. In this case, the procedure asks to set the landing field elevation manually with the landing elevation selector. As soon as the selector is moved from the auto position, the action line on the engine warning display clears and a manual message appears on the cabin pressure page. The landing elevation value will also indicate the selected value. To complete this module, let's look at some other abnormal indications. The safety valves prevent the cabin pressure from going too high or too low. An ECAM caution cabin pressure safety valve open is generated if one of the safety valves has been detected open for more than one minute.
Notice that the safety valve indication on the cab press page changes to amber. If on ground, and in case of abnormal residual pressure, when speed is below 100 knots, or after all engines are shut down, and with manual mode selected, or with both CPCs failed, the residual pressure control unit RPCU automatically controls the outflow valve to open. This is a demonstration of a Pack 1 overheat in flight. Cancel the master caution. Let's look at the fault indications. A fault message and associated checklist on the engine warning display. The ECAM bleed page has been automatically called to show amber indications. A fault light has illuminated on the air conditioning control panel. On the EWD, read the title of the failure. Before you begin, notice that the pack flow control valve has closed. This occurred automatically when the overheat was detected to protect the pack from damage. The valve color indication is amber because the valve position disagrees with the switch position. The compressor outlet temperature is also amber because the temperature limit has been exceeded. Notice also that since the pack valve has closed, the supply line from the pack to the mixer unit has turned amber. This happens because there is no airflow from the pack to the mixing unit. Read and perform the ECAM actions. The first step on ECAM directs you to turn off pack 1. This is to match pack switch and pack valve position and prepare to reset the pack. Note that the fault light on the pack push button switch is illuminated to help you locate it and to indicate the overheat condition. Switch off pack 1.
When pack one is turned off, an off light illuminates in the switch and the pack valve indication turns green, showing valve switch agreement. Notice that the fault light is still on. The completed procedural step disappears from the engine warning display. Let's move on to the next step of the procedure, which has two parts. The first part, a condition line, is not an action, but an analysis. We are to determine if the pack overheat is out. The fault light in the switch is extinguished, and the compressor outlet temperature indication is green, so we can conclude that the overheat is out. Therefore, accomplish the next ECAM action by turning Pack 1 back on. Switch on Pack 1. When the pack switch is turned back on, the off light is extinguished. Normal memos replace the failure message on the EWD because the failure condition no longer exists. And the cruise page returns to the system display. The failure message is read. Conditioning. Trim air system fault. The ECAM procedures are now followed. In the case of a trim air system fault, there is no action required by the crew. The next step in this example is to clear ECAM. Clear ECAM. Because this was just a crew awareness and no action was required by the crew, no status page is displayed. The crew's page is now displayed and the clear lights are out. The ECAM procedure for a trim error fault is complete. Should an ECAM or QRH procedure require the use of the ram air switch, it is operated by lifting the guarded flap and pushing the switch. Select the RAM air switch. An on light eliminates in the switch, the valve will open, and the indication on the ECAM bleed page will change to show this. Note that ECAM procedures normally call for the aircraft to be below flight level 100 minimum en route altitude before operating the RAM air valve, since the aircraft will depressurize. Let's look at another abnormal indication. The hot air fault light illuminates amber when a duct overheat is detected. If this occurs, the hot air pressure regulating valve and the trim air valves automatically close.